The M140 versus the E92 M3. Now I know what you're thinking, how can you possibly be comparing these two cars? Now, when you look at the facts, you'll be surprised they are very, very similar. Now I know, I know, I'm comparing an M Light to a fully fledged M car, arguably the greatest M car at that, but I think these cars are very, very similar. Now let's start off with the facts. Yes, this is an M Light and it is not an M car. However, this has a three litre turbo engine, unlike the E92 M3, which has a four litre V8. There you have it, a nice three litre straight six m light engine now this looks very very pretty however i'm not going to argue the case because this engine is nowhere near as good as the e92 m3 i'm not going to lie yes the e92 m3 engine is way better than that but that isn't to say this engine isn't good these engines have a lot of potential compared to the e92 m3 i'm not saying it's better but these have a lot more potential now modifications wise for the engine, now we all know the U9 M3 is a naturally aspirated V8, so it doesn't have a turbo. Now a lot of mapping or tuning or anything of the sort is based around turbo cars because you're essentially tuning the turbo. Naturally aspirated cars just do not gain even close to as much power as a turbo car would. So the U9 M3, you really have to supercharge it if you want to gain anything off it. Of course, you can do bigger intakes and you can map it and they will gain a little bit of power, but you're not going to gain a lot. A simple stage one on an M140i can take you from 335 brake horsepower to 420. The E92 M3, you'll probably gain 20 brake horsepower maximum with an exhaust or an intake. So engine wise, you would have to supercharge it. You would have to spend thousands. You would have to put so much time and money into that engine in order to create an absolute animal. I'm sat in my M140 right now, driving about, casually cruising about. You wouldn't even know that this car has that much power compared to the E92. So the E92 M3 has 414 brake horsepower from the factory. This only has 335. Now don't get me wrong, that is an extreme amount of brake horsepower for a small hot hatch car. However, this one, as I found out, is mapped. And it's stage one running 420 brake horsepower. So they're pretty even with a simple stage one map. And I mean, it goes back to that old, take the mickey out the B58 boys because they go for a downpipe and a tune, but it's very true because all you need to do is tune these cars and they are that fast and all you need is a downpipe and they sound absolutely unbelievable but i'm not going to sit here and tell you that the m140 sounds as good as the e92 m3 because we all know i'm a liar if i was to say that because the e92 m3 takes the cake you cannot even argue the question because the e92 sounds absolutely unbelievable <laughs> But these small B58 cars have a strong engine and out of the factory they sound really good. <laughs> As I said, these have way more potential than the E9 m 3 especially on a monetary basis because these have a turbo. They are so much easier to map than the E9 m 3 unless you spend thousands putting a supercharger on it. You don't need to do that with this. All you need to do is possibly map it or do an intake, an exhaust, whatever you need to do, anything of the sort, or even a bigger turbo. These cars have way more potential for a lot less money. So depending on what you're buying, if you're buying one of these cars to buy an out and out race car, this has a lot more potential to go a lot faster with a lot less money. 
Now, I'm not saying the E92 M3 isn't good or hasn't got potential because out of the factory, they are better than these. Without a doubt, they are a factory race car. They have a fat V8. They are built to go fast. They are built for a track. It is arguably one of the greatest M3s ever built. And there is a reason for that. This out of the factory is not built to be a race car. It is built to be a daily comfortable car with a bit of poke. The E9 Stone 3 is an out and out fast race car. So you are starting off with a better base than you would be with this M140. Now overall handling on the M140, now don't get me wrong, this is, as I said before, a comfortable hot hatch car. They haven't got absolutely outstanding handling and they never will until you put some suspension on this car. So the E90 Stone 3 has really good handling. It felt like it was on rails out of the factory and that is without putting any suspension on it. Now if you was to put a good set of suspension, coilover, springs on that E90 Stone 3, then you're talking about a different animal compared to the M140 because it is just that good round the corners. It feels like the car will never ever slide. And it probably does have a little bit to do with tires, maybe heating them, the weather that you're racing around in, or the fact that the car is slightly heavier and it's got better weight distribution. I don't know the ins and outs. However, I will say the E90 M3 compared to the M140 that is, has better handling. The handling on the M140 is more built to be a daily, a comfortable car, a city car that has really light steering. But with a bit of money, this M140 could be a lot better. And that is a big thing, especially when you're buying these cars to put it on a track. Money is an issue. If you want to spend as little as possible and get a fast car, this is the way forward. But if you want a good base and you just want to take a car around the track, I would not buy one of these. I would definitely buy an E92 M3. Moving on to another point about these two cars. Money-wise, they cost near enough the same amount. These might be slightly cheaper. Now, at the end of the day, we do have to remember we are comparing an M Light to a fully-fledged out-and-out M car. Now, it's pretty unfair to sit here and say the M140 is nowhere near the M cars because they are pretty close. They're sat around 15, 16 for a decent one now. So the E92 M3, on the other hand, you can get a really, really nice example of an E92 M3, low mileage, well kept for around £22,000 in this market right now. However, if you wanted to get a slightly higher mileage one, like mine had 80,000 miles on it. So that costed in and around the same price as this M140. And they have very similar mileage. This is on 70,000 right now, but it is a newer car, so more miles have been put on it, so the price has dropped. It goes up and down, but if you look for the pair of them on the market, you can get them for in and around the same price now. An E92 for, and I'm talking a nice, nice example, not like a club sport version, but a standard E92 M3. You are looking at around 22,000 pounds for a lower mileage one, a well-kept example, only really used on the weekend. Serviced well, 22 grand, but you can get one of these for around 20,000 pounds with that same sort of style, low mileage, well-kept, and these are newer cars, so chances are they're gonna be low mileage. However, for a higher mileage example, E92 M3, there has been multiple put on there. When I had mine, they were around 15 to 16,000 pounds, and that is quite cheap for an M car. And these are the same. You can get these 13, 14, 15,000 pounds for one with 70, 80,000 miles on it. They are literally identical markets. And I don't think people quite realize that. You can get a 2018 M140 and put 500 pounds into it and have the exact same power as an E973 for the exact same amount of money. It blows my mind, but you get way more tech in an M140. You have the newer car, you have everything. You have nice LEDs, the Apple CarPlay, the interior is all done up nice. The E973 doesn't have that because it's an older car, but you're paying the same price. So what would you choose? Would you choose the newer car with the same power for the same price, or would you go for the M3 just because it has the M3 title? So don't get me wrong, 
you can get one of these for the same price as an E92 M3, but it depends on why you're buying it. If you're buying one of these cars because you want a comfortable daily with a bit of power, these are definitely the way forward. The E92 M3 could be bought for a weekend car, and I would say this isn't really a weekend car. If you have a nice daily car, I would buy an E92 M3 and have it as a weekend car or a track car and have a bit of fun with it. But for bang for your buck, I would say this depends on who you are because E92 M3, bang for your buck for a race car, is definitely the E973, but for a nice casual daily car that you can make fast bang for your buck, M140. Now, if you are genuinely considering buying one of these two cars, I will say to you now, the E973 costs way more to run than this car would. The E973, for a year of tax, is £735 or £770 if you pay it off monthly. So not a lot of people will want to pay that outright. This, on the other hand, is, I think off the top of my head, is about £180 a year. So it's a big difference. I know it's only a couple of hundred quid across the year, but it does make a difference. As well, you have the fuel. Now the fuel is a massive kicker for the E973. That is why a lot of people do not daily them. That is why a lot of people have them as a track car or a weekend car or a fun little toy to use whenever they like because it is so expensive to run. Now, there is two completely separate groups for these cars. Now you have the E92 M3 group, and everyone who owns one, chances are they've bought it because it has that V8, and they wanna use it as a track car, or maybe just a fun weekend toy. Not a lot of people actually daily them because they have a brain. However, the other side of it, they have the M140 fans, and they are usually there is kind of two ends of the spectrum. The casual daily car that you want to have a bit of power or you buy one and you go fully flat out and you send it, you modify it, you make it stage three plus, you just do the works, you big turbo it. But the usability for each of them varies massively. And I don't think that would change the M140 that drastically in a sense of being able to drive it as an everyday car. Yes, it's going to be extremely fast and it will be a lot faster than the M3 will, but it will probably be a bit more usable than the M3. The M3, yes, it was very fast, it was loud, but it was just so hard to drive as an everyday car. And monetary wise as well, it is a different ball game when you come to the E973 as a daily, that is. It's a big V8, it's so expensive to fuel these cars every single day. These cars are newer. The technology is way more advanced. It takes a lot, you can put this in eco pro mode. You can save a lot more fuel on a car like this, but you can have all that power. You can have everything the E92 M3 has, besides the big engine, but you can have everything a normal car has as well. Now, if you've clicked on this video, there's a reason. There's a reason because you in the back of your mind have thought, I want that car for that reason. Now, if that is the M140 and you want it as a daily and you want to modify it and you want to make it really fast, I would definitely go for something like this over the E92 M3 because it's a dailyable car. But if you're looking here for the E92 M3 and you're thinking, how can you even compare this to the M3? Well, you are probably the people that want this car as a weekend toy or a track car. And yes, that is better for that sort of scene. There is two different scenes. The M140 boys that want it fast daily or a track car or you have the E92 boys that just want a track car toy because I don't think you could daily the E92 M3 it just wouldn't work because the M3 is not a daily a dailyable car it just isn't I daily that car for around three months and I can tell you now they are not the comfiest thing to drive because they are very stiff it is an M car and arguably one of the greatest M cars because it has a big fat V8 in the front of it. To daily in a car like that is just not feasible and it's just not very nice in general. Compared to a car like this that is, this car you could daily every single day and not have a problem with it. It's so comfy, it's quiet, you haven't got an exhaust blaring through unless you put an exhaust on that is. And the whole car in general, just the tech, the comfort, you have Apple CarPlay at your disposal, you have power to use whenever you need it. It is just an all round better car for a daily, but that doesn't necessarily mean it isn't as good as the M car because the M car is slightly better in its own ways. This car is better in other ways. 
And I think that is the main difference between these two cars. One of them, you have the best of both worlds. You can use this car as a daily, but you can also change it into a race car. The E9 Zoom 3, on the other hand, you only have one. It is just an out and out race car. There is no in between. You cannot daily a car like that. It just is not feasible. Nobody wants to do it. That's why I think the M140, in that sense, is a lot better. Now, I'm sorry for all those fanboys out there for this particular car, but if I had to choose to have one of them, I would choose the M140. Now, realistically, there is two different groups looking at this video and thinking either I'm an idiot or yes, I'm right. It is completely my opinion and yours might be slightly different. Please put it in the comments. What do you think? After hearing all of that, what do you think would you would choose? Would you go for the M140 or would you have the E92 M3? Put it in the comments because I do want to hear the difference of opinion and maybe the argument you want to throw in there to say, no, this is better because of this or this one's better because of this. I want to hear it, so drop it in the comments. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and do like this video. It does help out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.